All right. Um, in this next example, we're going to do the exact same thing. Set them all equal to x. Do you guys notice how the square root of 7 and square root of negative 7, um, they, uh, whenever you have the square root, remember how we always had to do square root equals plus or minus, right? That, that why it comes in here, and I'll come up to that again. So if I solve these equal to x, I get x minus square root of 7 equals 0, x plus the square root of 7 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. Then you can multiply these, x minus square root of 7 times x plus the square root of 7 times x minus 3 equals 0. What you guys notice, though, is this is difference of two squares. First two terms are the same, last two terms are the same. One's minus, one's plus. What does that tell us? That tells us we just need to multiply the first and last two terms because the middle terms will divide out. And I get x squared minus 7. Now, another little simple trick you guys can see, whenever you have the square roots, doesn't it make sense x squared, um, x squared equals 7? If you were to solve this, what would you do? You take the square root, of, square root on both sides, and you get x equals plus or minus 7, which gives you those two factors. So do you guys see how knowing if you have plus or minus the square root of 7, that x squared minus 7 is a factor? So you don't really have to go through all the steps. You could easily quickly just kind of go to there if you're caught on. If not, just follow what I did. Then again, we can use FOIL. I'm going to do the math. Though in my head, I'll just write the final answer. So I get x cubed minus 3x squared minus 7x plus 21 equals. You could set it equal to 0, but we're going to set it equal to y because they're asking us for the function. And so I'll just do it with that one. You guys have a practice of each one of these.